All right, folks. It's time to see what's going to happen next in Trails of Cold Steel 4. Dually is the one that's going to greet us. What, are you going to show us around? Do Valley the Swifty? That's the triangle face. You know they're, they're to be feared when they show those eyes. Uh oh. That's ancient in JRPG ages. Pretty crazy the amount of star power that this place has. Crow's joining this party. Who's next? Who's going to show up next? I guess she's the only one missing that's prominent. It's been a while since we had our last rivalries. In fact, we only had one. Right? Only with Crow here. When's the next one? What? The butler has no name? How is that possible? Fish burgers. I prefer beef. All right, we got new class seven over here, minus Muse, the host. Dinner is served. B A. Of course, I have to sing. All right. Do when we see the next scene, is dinner already finished, or will, will we see food? No, we won't see food. We did see food. Nice. The food had to be eaten at some point. And now everyone's full. It's time to get to... before you is an outline of Operation Meal Mirage. Business. Our response to Operation Jormungand. <laughs> Does Reen have it figure out, figured out after looking at the map? I knew it. Lloyd also it doesn't stray too far from what we'd expected, but even so. Explain away, Duchess Mildine. Seeing it all laid out like this makes it overwhelmingly real. Wait, has she finished explaining it to them? 
but not to us, the player. I get that a plan this crazy is probably our only hope, but wow. still, we're really gonna do this, huh? The operation will unfold with the player not knowing the full picture. That's one way to approach it. <laughs> the Empire has drastically increased its military might, due largely in part to the draft. Current estimates number their forces at 1.2 million strong. And that figure will only rise before the fighting actually starts. That's a lot of bodies. Let the bodies hit the floor. On the other hand, Calvert's military can barely scrape together 800,000, at most. Even if they try to boost their ranks with a draft of their own, that probably won't go over too well, judging by their last election. Not to mention the huge difference in weapons and resources between the two countries. In terms of both aerial combat fleets and core tank units, Erebonia has a clear advantage. Clear and overwhelming advantage. And that's without taking Panzer Soldats into account. Yeah. There's no way the Vern Company's production line could even hope to keep up. What's more, the Empire now has an excuse to throw all the new technology it's been developing into this war. Well, your company's a huge contributor to that. With that in mind, it's entirely possible that the Civil War was nothing more than an opening move. I agree. It seems likely. The same could be said of the Orbal shutdown phenomenon. Or even the Hundred Days War. It is our belief that these events were simply set up. All to pave the way for Operation Jormungand. <laughs> That's a whole lot of setting up. <sighs> Damn it! Those monsters! And Neil Mirage is your plan for how to hold back Operation Jormungand. We have with us the Republican Army of Calvert, the Royal Army of Liberal, the Remifarian and Weisslin armies, as well as troops from Lamon and Orid, and even resistance cells acting out of Crossbell and North Ambria. It's like a Suikoden story all of a sudden. You intend to coordinate every one of these individual forces united under a single banner to suppress the Imperial Army from all sides. The Orange Army. That's exactly right. As you stated before, Calvert's armed forces total 800,000 strong. Trying to look at the map there. So we're gonna all spread out. One central force. Then the rest will spread out to the sides. Is that it? The Viceland army should bring that number up by about a hundred thousand. The Principality of Remifaria is prepared to lend its aid as well, to the effect of approximately eighty thousand troops. Add to that figure an additional one hundred twenty thousand from the Kingdom of Liberal. Further, we can count on receiving around 20,000 soldiers from Laman and Orid combined, as well as another 10,000 from Crossbell and North Ambria. Well, those are numbers, I guess. And this is to remain off the record, but we're expecting roughly 30,000 in reinforcements from Arteria as well. Secret troops. Naturally, we plan on bringing Jaegers into the fight, too. We've been scouting out Jaeger corps big and small. All in all, I'd say we're looking at a good 40,000 extra soldiers. Altogether a combined total of 1.2 million. Okay. That's a match. Finally putting us on even ground with Operation Jormungand. A war like this would stretch over almost half the continent. Resistance cells from Crossbell, huh? That must be Sonya and the others. Yeah, Muriel told me a bit about it, but... I don't remember Sonia. Northambria too? That have something to do with the movements we heard about there? Yeah. The resistance there is made up of former members of the Northern Jaegers, who got absorbed into the Imperial Army. And we got troops from Laman and Orid too. That would be their defense forces, no? That's right. We've actually known about their involvement for a little bit. I have to say... I'm surprised the high seat of the Septian Church would choose to involve themselves so directly. Elliot, why don't you round up your fans and maybe contribute another 10,000 troops? But Rosine mentioned something about this earlier, didn't she? Yes. 
The Congregation for Divine Worship is likely deploying the Papal Guard as we speak. The Imperial Army's technological superiority is undeniable, and we can't underestimate the threat Ouroboros poses either. Further, directing and coordinating all parties involved will prove a tremendously difficult task. That is the purpose of our meeting, to determine who will serve as the key piece in our plan, the cornerstone upon which we can build our success. Who else will be the key piece? Then Reen Schwarzer. Right? I present to you Cassius Bright, Lieutenant General of the Royal Army of Liberal. No, oh, would it be the Divine Blade instead? And, as of today, Supreme Commander of Operation Meal Mirage. There's no better general to take command than him. <laughs> what? Now that's what I call a power move. A natural decision. Lieutenant General Bright did head the search and destroy operations against the cult in Crossbell. What's more, he can already boast having pushed back an Imperial invasion once before. He's the most brilliant tactician of our time, without a doubt. I'm on board. I should have known. So you've accepted the position then, Dad? Even after hearing everything that's going to happen as a result of this plan. I'm sure Mr. Bright likes the challenge. I have. This can truly be called the Great War, the likes of which mankind has never seen before. And not letting go of this opportunity to command one side. A war that will surely destroy the lives of all it touches, soldiers and civilians alike. Hundreds of thousands of lives. Worst comes to worst, we could see casualties in the millions. Millions? Yeah, that's definitely possible. But at least it will keep the Empire from completely destroying everything. Kia, she has a point. I think I speak for us all when I say this dreadful decision weighs heavily on our hearts. But there are stakes here far more dire than the invasion of Calvert itself. Yep. Namely, Erebonia's two Septarians as well as its curse, which spreads further and further with every land it conquers. We gotta stop the curse. Uh, it's all connected. If we don't act soon, the Republic will fall to the Empire's advance, drowning the entire nation in its curse. It would then only be a matter of time before the surrounding countries fell as well, until finally all of Zemuria is in the curse's grasp. All for the sake of reviving the ultimate being, the Great One. One on one or the great one, the Brahma Bowl. This we must avoid above all else. If this dreadful decision is the only chance we have of saving our world, why not call that 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 creature something like the terrible one? Why does it have to be the great one instead, huh? Then so be it. This whole catastrophe began in Erebonia. Though I can't personally agree to this plan, as a member of the Imperial family, I must allow it. Your Highness. <laughs> this is the consensus we have reached. I trust you understand now the reason we've gathered here. There are a few things we must ask you now. Namely, if you accept the necessity of our plan. And furthermore, if we can count on your cooperation. Of course we're gonna say yes. I'm sure you'd like some time to talk things over amongst yourselves. And with your other allies as well. But as you can probably tell, that's time we just don't have. Members of the Bracer Guild, Special Support Section, Class 7, and Thor's Military Academy as a whole. We need your answers, here and now. How do you respond? Wow, way to put on the pressure. We just we can't even talk amongst ourselves here give us a minute you're just pressuring us to say yes there's no way we're gonna say no well everyone is nodding i guess it's a yes the yes have it when it comes down to it we, the Special Support Section, are just a single division of the CPD. 
We're in no position to defy the will of a nation, let alone four. We understand the severity of the situation. But be that as it may, we can't in good faith lend our aid to this cause. Uh-oh. There has to be a better way to fix this mess we're in. And we won't back down until we figure out how. But I don't fully understand what the operation is, so... Whatever it is, Lloyd is not on board. Not just to stop this war, but so that someday, Crossbell can take back its independence for good. It's a no from them. <laughs> I see. You can count the Bracer Guild out of this deal, too. Wow, everyone's gonna say no, huh? We're the supporting gauntlet of the common people. Their security and protection will always come first. But at the same time, we understand that you have to do this. So instead, we'll make sure to get in touch with our headquarters in Lamont to organize an evacuation plan for all the citizens. Are you gonna put a, a bomb or something? And in the meantime, we'll look for our own way to resolve this. Just like the SSF. Hey, that's why we're a, we're a, a new faction. The SSS Bracer Guild Class 7 fuck faction. We're gonna find another way. That's the Bracer Guild's decision. Estelle. Ah. <laughs> With so many of us still missing, we can't claim to speak for Thoris as a whole. But we can, at the very least, tell you our decision as Class 7. It's a no! Become the foundation of the world. In a sense, those words have shaped our class from the very beginning. A war this big is certainly one way to keep the curse in check. We could be a new foundation afterwards. One built over ruins and destruction. But this curse is not absolute. Though it sweeps across the nation, toying with our fate, there are still those who stand together to resist it. We've seen as much with our very own eyes. These are some of the friends we've seen we along the way. We need try and ensure the safety of the world as we know it. Meal Mirage can be that plan, but like the Guild and the SSS, we choose to find a third path forward for ourselves. All right, all of our forces combined. We will summon Captain Planet. That means dealing with any incidents brought about by the curse, as well as the rivalries. Whether or not that's even possible, I don't know. Time is running out on us even as we speak. Yet still, we'll continue to tread forward, step by step. They're not dead. Don't show us pictures like they're dead. Because... We owe it to Prince Olivert to find that third path he always strove to take. Well, we naturally has the most lines among the three leaders. Reen. Yeah, you're exactly right. The path Prince Oliver would have wanted. I see. <laughs> My goodness. The naivete of youth never fails to astound. And yet, as history shows us, it is precisely the young and foolish who bring change to the world. The same could be said of those not bound by duty or tradition. Come to think of it, Prince Oliver himself embodied every one of those qualities. <laughs> he most certainly did, and his spirit lives on in this next generation. We have heard your convictions, clear and true. So what? I don't think they're gonna back out. Operation Meal Mirage is already underway. But so long as you respect our position, we will respect yours in turn. Hopefully your whole operation wasn't counting on us doing some big roles, cause we're not on board. You're under no obligation to participate in our plan. That said, we'd appreciate your help wherever possible. That includes exchanging information, keeping civilians safe, and so on. We certainly have more room to cooperate than Operation Jormungand does, at the very least. You Bracers played a pivotal role in solving the incidents in Liburo, as did the Special Support Section in Crossbell. I eagerly await seeing what such seasoned heroes can bring to the table. Thank you. 
We won't disappoint. I don't know if I'd call us heroes exactly, but we'll help out in any way we can. Cut to Reen. From Lloyd to Estelle to Reen. Wait. Oh, that suspense was killing me. Lachius, it's not your turn. As grim as our circumstances are, we now know what our mission must be. All right. Everyone has to put, has to say their lines now. Right. We gotta do everything we can to stop this war before it begins. And even if it does, we'll just have to find a way to end it. Right. Our first course of action is figuring out exactly what we can accomplish right now as members of Thor's. I imagine the rivalries will play a key role in that. Agreed. <laughs> You're all pretty gung-ho about this, huh? Uh, how are you guys so relentlessly positive about everything? It really is the most annoying thing about them, isn't it? Wait, what's this? Wait a sec. Who shut off the lights? I know that what? voice. The screen. It's him. Enforcer number zero of Ouroboros. Here comes the clown, the jester. Campanella, show yourself. <laughs> Sounds like things are coming along nicely over here. Quite the illustrious guest list you have here. I'm almost starstruck. Still the only one to appear in all three series. Indeed. It would seem the rumors weren't unfounded. Belle! The new third anguish of Ouroboros. Lady Mildine, my greetings to you and all the leaders of the world gathered here today. I see a number of familiar faces and some new ones too. My, how delightful. You must be Dieter Kroisis' daughter. I've heard the rumors of what you've become. A crazy woman. Member of an international terrorist organization. Gracious me. The well, she's been recruited. Whoa, he really called it, huh, Lady Bell? Ha, huh, you're one to talk. Hey, uh, this is some party you guys got going on. Okay, we got Shirley, we got Rutger. Where's McBurn? And Arian Rod. Those are probably the only ones missing. Real swanky joint, too. Shame for you, Zephyr's here to crash. Surely. Boss. That means Zeno and Leo are here, too, doesn't it? Sure does. But hey, we're not done with the lineup just yet. Don't think things will go the same for you here as they did at the workshop. Please excuse our intrusion. Sharon. Okay, we got Sharon. Georg. And Lecter. George! Also a star power cast of villains. So you've come. Lecter, it's really you. In the flesh. Long time no see, ladies. My lady, everyone, I apologize for interrupting such an important meeting. <sighs> you should have just kept the mask on, Angie. If you're all quite finished, it's time I make the final introduction. Ooh, who is this? Yes. Cedric is like the Dominic Mysterio of the villains. Cedric, why are you... Ah, if it isn't my dear sister, Alvin. And Class 7. Your little stunt in leaves caused me no end of headaches. <laughs> you had it coming. That's what you get for getting Elise and Tio all wrapped up in your schemes. That's simply how it works between us. You should understand this by now. The rivalries are no different. This particular matter has been entrusted to me by Chancellor Osborne himself. Consider this a little congratulatory visit from us to celebrate the commencement of Operation Neil Mirage. There's no redeeming quality of Prince Cedric. Were we so, just where, where are they? Yep. They probably used the society's astral code to infiltrate the system. Explosions imminent in three, two. Courtesy of Bell and the Fool, I'd assume. One. Sounds like we're in for a fair bit of trouble then, huh? Yeah, they're coming. What the? Damn, they brought Imperial warships. Okay, so they have yet to no, come. Not quite. This is the bridge. We have an emergency. We've got eight crimson ships approaching on our nine, and and with them, 
A 280 yards class airship. They're gonna try to board us. Damn. There's only one ship that friggin' massive. You mean the one that appeared during the Orville shutdown? Ooh. That's right. Ouroboros's pride and joy. The largest battleship in the history of mankind. The final dungeon of Trails in the Sky. Ooh, the, the second, right? The Crimson Ark. The Glorious. If my memory serves me correctly, I think that was the final dungeon. Or, no, maybe the final dungeon was the continent, whatever. Still, it was one of the final dungeons, I think. Unless I'm misremem misremembering, which is, of course, entirely possible. War has begun. Well, explosions did happen. Now what are we going to do? There's a leak. There's a mole. Wow, all according to their plan, you've used us successfully. Okay, two groups, two parties. Everyone's available? Wow, okay, is everyone... Oh. All right, we don't get a pick. So first group is reading in class seven with Estelle, Joshua, Ren, Lloyd, Ellie, Teal, Crow, Zubali, and the others. Oh, so that's wait, I got confused. Okay, first group. We we don't have access to the non Erebonian folks. Why is Ash locked? I don't want him in. Bring Agate. Machias. For the other group. Okay, we got more of non class seven here. Only one of open slot, that's harsh. Well, then I'm gonna bring in Laura. Who else? Girls and boys. Best of luck, all of you. You guys be careful. Okay? Wait, what in the world's going on? Whatever it is, it looks like we got a real juicy scoop on our hands. Oh, no you don't. You're such a one-note character, Grace. I believe you all know what it is you must do. Yeah. We got this. Just leave it to us. Now then, shall we move out ourselves? 
We are currently under attack by Ouroboros' enhanced Jaegers and members of the Red Constellation. The Red Constellation, huh? Gonna be a real pain in the ass, especially with the Blitz there. Gilbert's probably heading up the enhanced Jaegers. Not that he's anything to worry about. His archaisms might still give us some trouble, though. Well, speak for yourself. I'll make sure that little errand boy regrets ever stepping foot in here. Gilbert's nothing. Ash, Kurt, I'll be counting on you. <laughs> you understood. We must stop his highness. Yuna, Altina, we're going to need your support as well. Of course! Let's do this, Ellie! I'll give it my best. All right, guys. It's time to begin our joint operation. Team A will go starboard. Team B, you head port. Our current position is the rear side of the lower deck. Wow, they're really also formal despite everything that's happening. Let's make our way up to the top deck. Take out any intruders you find along the way. Right. Right. Okay, party split. This will be the perfect chance to put our teamwork to the test, huh? It's our time to shine, Reen. Let's go. Fist bump. Right. Show me what you've got, Lloyd. Wait, another far fist bump. Okay, they will merge. So I can't just split the good equipment. I need to equip the main fighters properly. Well, folks, that's been a long cutscene. And it's dungeon crawling time. I'm going to see you guys if there's any relevant cutscenes or perhaps at the end of this dungeon. Next time in Trails. Right. Huh. Huh. Yeah, of Cold Steel 4.